fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver, let go, big fellow. I'll do it! Melissa Powell, a woman about 40 years of age, was considered by the townspeople of Laredo to be one of their most unusual and cherished attractions. When Melissa drove from her large ranch house to town, her appearance there never failed to cause a bit of a sensation. For unlike the usual Western woman, Melissa not only rode in a shiny black carriage drawn by a pair of high-stepping glossy black horses, but when she alighted, the sheen of silk and satin gown, the plumed velvet hat, and the dainty lace parasol drew gasps from the women and admiring glances from the men. At such a time, she was center of attention and the sole topic of conversation. Hey, look, here comes Melissa Powell. She's going to stop here at the store. Oh, hold there. Oh, hold now. Well, howdy, Miss Melissa. Let me help you out. Why, thank you, Mr. Hawkins. You're so kind. Oh, gosh. It's a pleasure, ma'am. I won't be long, James. Wait for me. Oh, yes, ma'am. I uh, saw your carriage coming down the street, so I ran out to meet you. Let me help you up the steps. Oh, of course. I'll take your arm, Mr. Hawkins. Howdy, Miss Melissa. Oh, well, hello Melissa. there, Jack. Hello there. <laughs> Now, Miss Melissa, what can I do for you? Randy was in earlier today and got a lot of stuff. So I reckon it isn't much you want. Randolph forgot to bring out some yarn I wanted. <laughs> you know, he's a wonderful ranch foreman, but I can't trust him to do my shopping. He always forgets something. <laughs> reckon with all the boys staying around, Randy didn't want to ask for knitting wool. <laughs> well, I got red, yellow, blue, and green. What you want, ma'am? I'll take six balls of the red, please. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I got them right here. Ah, there you are, Miss Melissa. Six of the red. Fine. I'll wrap them up for you in a jiffy. Good morning, Dave. I want to get a few supplies. Well, I'm sorry, Jake. Less than you have the cash, I can't let you have any more on credit. But listen, Dave, I'll make a strike in my claim soon, I'm sure of it. You've been saying that for months. I'm sorry, Jake. Just a minute, Mr. Hawkins. 
My good man, would you allow me to offer the use of my account for you to get your supplies? Well, well uh, gosh, ma'am, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, never mind, don't try to say anything. Mr. Hawkins, I give you permission to charge $20 worth of supplies to my account for this gentleman. Well, just as you say, Miss Melissa, that's sure mighty kind of you. <laughs> yes, ma'am, it, it sure is. Oh, not at all. After all, we Westerners must help one another. It's the least we can do. <laughs> I'll uh, see you to your carriage, ma'am. Oh, no, thank you, Mr. Hawkins. It won't be necessary. Good morning. Great day. She sure is a mighty fine lady. Yep, she sure is. She's <laughs> like something out of picture book. Her ranch house has got plush furniture out here. Yeah, and even the plan, they see. Uh, where did she come from, anyway? Well, as I hear it, her old man owned a silver mine up near Denver. When his wife died, he sold out and came down into this territory. Sent his daughter East to school. When she come to live with him on that big ranch, he brought red plush carpets and furniture all the way from St. Louis. Yeah. And he brought out that fancy carriage, too, so she could live in style. Well, well I'll be doggone. Of course, that's a story I heard from a foreman, Randy. Seems like when the old man died, she just continued on, never did get married. Oh, now, uh, what supplies do you want to get, Jake? But the townspeople of Laredo would have been filled with consternation and disbelief if they could have seen and heard the Melissa Powell, who after dark emerged from her silks and satins to don Levi's blouse and sombrero and who strode like a man to the bunkhouse on her ranch. Yeah, that's you, boss? Yes. In just a second, I'll let you in. Well, boys, did Randy tell you the plans for tonight? Yes, yes. Good. Those prize horses on the Circle X spread will bring a big price across the border. We'll leave in half an hour. We'll be ready to hit leather, boss. Say, I still don't think you should wear I that. know what you're going to say, Randy. You think I shouldn't wear this sapphire bracelet. That's right. Well, I've told you before, I won't go without it. When Dad had his gang in Colorado, he took this from a real lady. The kind I always wanted to be. Gave it to me, and I intend to wear it all the time. But if somebody recognized it when you ride with a gang... My sleeves cover it, so no one's going to see it, except when I'm dressed like a lady. So stop worrying. <laughs> well, have it your way. You sure got everybody fooled with that lady stuff you pulled in the daytime. Now listen, you. I'll have you know when I dress up, I'm as much of a lady as any other woman. I went to school in St. Louis, a good school, too. Don't forget that. Yeah, but it would take more than a girl's school to turn you into a lady, a boy. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up, all of you! Before I forget I am a lady. Now, as for you, Randy, well, I ought boss, to... Boss, put away the six-shooter. We use us fighting amongst ourselves. Oh, well, yeah, okay. all right. But be careful what you say after this, understand? Sure, sure. Anything you say, huh, fellas? Sure, Randy. Right. Yeah, sure. Good. I'll meet you at the corral in half an hour. A few days later, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, followed the trail that led to Laredo. As they rode at a leisurely pace, the Lone Ranger was saying, According to the report given us by the Padre, Toto, there's a ruthless gang of outlaws operating in the vicinity of Laredo. Ah. Padre say lawmen not able to get trace outlaws. Maybe them hide in mountains to south. Could be. Seems the members of the gang are always masked. A week ago, they held up the stage from Corpus Christi. And a few nights ago, they stole some prize horses from a spread near Laredo. Ah. Padre say them kill driver stage. Since they must realize they'll all hang for murder, they'll stop at nothing to prevent being captured. Isn't that right? We'll pitch camp in the hills near town. Then we'll decide just what we'll do. A couple of miles from town, the Lone Ranger and Tonto found a suitable campsite in a secluded hollow. It was late afternoon when Tonto went into town for a few supplies. Before long, he returned to the camp. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Easy, Scott. Easy, fella. Any news in town, Tonto? Well, you may not hear much news. But me see fine lady in store, Kimasabi. Oh, her beautiful. <laughs> the way you talk, she must have been unusual. Ah, her wear plenty fancy clothes, wear fine necklace, have bracelet of gold set with blue-colored stones. 
her le- leave and fine carriage. I've heard of a woman who lives near Laredo in the style of an eastern lady. Her name is Powell, uh, Miss Melissa Powell. Ah, me here feller in store call her Miss Melissa. Her style of living is out of place here in the far southwest. I wonder why she doesn't go back east to live. Well, it seem like people in town like Powell woman. <laughs> After supper, it may be wise for you and me to ride to Laredo. We might get some news that will give us a lead to the outlaw gang. It was still light when the Lone Ranger and Toto reached the outskirts of town and stopped in a grove of trees. The masked man waited while the Indian went into Laredo. Toto drew rein in front of the cafe and dismounted. Oh, hello, fella. Easy scout, easy fella. At that moment, he saw a stagecoach turn into the main street at breakneck speed. Stage come plenty fast. As the stage passed, Toto noticed the guard slumped in his seat on the boot, so he hurried with the crowd to the stage stop. Get the sheriff, somebody. We were held up by outlaws. You better get a doctor, too. How many were there? Where did it happen? Hey, here comes the sheriff hey, now. Uh, what's going on here? What's happened? Got held up out by the bridge. About six of them. They plugged the guard in the shoulder. Hey, that dog going out for a gang again, yeah, eh? Yeah, they shot a passenger, too. Only one we had, a man. He's dead, as far as I can tell. All right. Some of you help the guard get down. Right. I'll look inside. All right, boys. Here, I'll let you down, do you? That easy does it, yeah, now. He's dead, all right. Yeah, I can see that are. from here. How come they shot him? Well, sir, after they took the money box, two of them dismounted and looked inside the coach. One of them, smaller and slimmer than the rest, poked a gun in the open window and said something I didn't hear. Then what? Well, the passenger, then I heard a tussle. And the outlaw said, let go of my arm in a sort of a young voice and, well, like a boy almost. Then I heard a shot. And they all mounted and left in a hurry. And they were all masked. Well, as soon as we attend to the wounded guard and move this body, we'll form a posse and go out to the bridge. Maybe we can pick up the trail. I'll go right out there with you. Toto quickly left the crowd, and mounting scout reached the grove where the Lone Ranger was waiting within a few minutes. Oh, scout, oh, fella. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Well, what's happened, Toto? Well, stage come in, other end of town. Drivers say them have hold up. Briefly, the Indian told what he had heard. When he had finished, the Lone Ranger spoke. Toto, this may be our chance to get a line on those outlaws. It will be 20 minutes or half an hour before the posse leaves town, I think. Ah. We'll ride out to the bridge and look the ground over before the sheriff and the posse get there and spoil the trail. Here, Silver. There's a big fella, easy. He's just got easy, fella. Come Silver! Come on, Silver! A short time later, the masked man and Indian reached the spot where the holdup had taken place. Oh, Silver, oh, easy, 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 fella. Easy, fella. Oh, me. You see, plenty sign, Kimasabi. Outlaws ride to river, look like. We'll follow their trail while it's fresh. Of course, the border's close and they may... What's this? Huh? What's your find, Kimasabi? A woman's bracelet. Oh, that look like bracelet lady in store have on today. You mean uh, Melissa Powell? Ah, uh, me sure that like one she wear. It's been ripped apart. See there? The catch held, but one of the links is pulled loose. It would take quite a tug to make it come apart like that. That right? Strange that we've found the bracelet here. Ah, it right at place where holdup happened. Yes, that's what I mean. I understand her ranch is out this way. She must have lost it on the way home. That true? Yet if it fell from her arm, it would have fallen inside the carriage. Unless she put her arm out the open window for some reason and it was ripped off. Maybe that's what really happened. In that case, though, she'd stop the carriage to find an expensive bracelet like this. Maybe carriage stop, but them not able to find it. Well, Toto, if the carriage had stopped, she would have seen the bracelet since it was in plain sight in the middle of the trail. I mean not think of that. It strains the bracelet was lost right here where the stage was held up and robbed. I think I'll... Wait. Look. Come here with that rise back there. Uh, sheriff and posse. It's not good. We'll be found here. All right, let's mount. Hurry. He's just got to be so far. Monsieur! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue. When the Lone Ranger and Toto were at the scene of the holdup, looking at the bracelet they'd found, they suddenly saw the sheriff and the posse coming over a rise in the trail. Quickly, the two men galloped away as the sheriff and the posse men opened fire. The posse pulled rein at the scene of the recent holdup. Hey, Doug, honey. We were too far away to plug those two outlaws. You know, it's funny they came back here to the place where the stage was held up. Well, what are we stopping for, Sheriff? Aren't we going to follow them? They went off in the same direction the gang took after they held us up. Well, in that case, we'll get after him. And we'll keep after him till they lead us to the gang's hideout. Let's get going. Right. Get up there. Get up. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Toto followed along the trail left by the outlaw gang. Soon they reached the Rio Grande and pulled to a halt. Oh, 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 fella. Well, it looked like outlaws go through water to the other side, Kimasabi. They must have crossed the border, all right. The trail leads right into the river. Ah, river plenty shallow here. The posse will follow us, so we might as well go on across. The sheriff won't cross the border, I'm sure. Well, me not think so. Our lawmen have no authority over there. There's nothing to stop us from keeping on that gang's trail. All right, let's get going. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. As soon as they reached the Mexican side of the river, the Lone Ranger and Toto discovered that they'd lost the outlaw's trail. Nevertheless, they turned and rode along the riverbank for some distance to the south. Finally, they stopped. Oh, 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 fella. I'm convinced they didn't leave the water anywhere along the bank in this direction, Toto. Not right. But them not able to ride in water to north because of rapids. That's what I figure. There's only one answer. They must have doubled back to the Texas side. Ah. We'll go across right here, then search the other side for their trail. The sun's gone down, but there's enough twilight to see. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Meantime, Melissa and her gang had returned to her ranch, where she quickly assumed the attire which she considered turned her into a lady. Randy and the men were in the bunkhouse when the door opened suddenly and Melissa entered with a swish of silken skirts. Something wrong, boss? Yes, there is. My bracelet's missing. What's I told you. Well, I wore it, and that's that. But what worries me is I think it fell off when that fool passenger grabbed my arm. Hey, that might mean trouble. Yeah, I suppose somebody finds it there. Hey, look, boss. In the first place, this is the first time you went out with the gang before dark, which I told you you shouldn't do. In the second place, you wore that ding-busted bracelet in spite of what I had to say. So what if I did? The fact is, I lost it, and we have to get it back. But it'd be suicide for any of us to go back there now. <laughs> None of you have to go back. The moon is bright now. I'll go myself. Jim, get the carriage and bring it around to the ranch house door. All right, ma'am. Now, no, wait a minute. People wonder if they see your carriage stopped at that place where the stage was held up. They'll wonder more about your driving out at night. They know you never do. Well, this can be the first time, then. And let them wonder. <laughs> Nobody would suspect Miss Melissa Powell of being connected with outlaws. Well, let's hope not. But remember, an hombre was killed in that holdup. And folks will be ready to suspect anybody. Oh, shut up. Go get the carriage, Jim. You all right? I'll have it ready in ten minutes. After a careful and tiring search, the Lone Ranger and Toto finally picked up the outlaw's trail once again, and it led them to the back of Melissa's ranch. The moonlight was extremely bright, so that they were able to see sufficiently to follow the hoof marks. They approached a barn from the rear and stopped in a grove of trees. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. This ranch must be where those outlaws are staying, Toto. Ah. We wonder who owned them. I don't know. We'll leave the horses here and... Wait, wait keep something. Carriage go from barn around to front of ranch house. It carried a lady me see in town. Oh, this is interesting. 
She may not know the outlaws are hiding here. Isn't that right? Yet I think it's strange that she lost her bracelet where the holdup took place. And that the outlaw's trail leads to her spread. Isn't that plenty strange? The carriage is going out the front way to the main trail. We'll follow it and find out where she's going. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. At a distance, the Lone Ranger and Tonto followed Melissa's carriage. As they topped a rise, they saw the carriage stop where the holdup had taken place. The masked man and Indian turned off the trail into an arroyo, which ran parallel to the trail. They dismounted and left their horses ground hitched. Then they quietly went on foot along the arroyo until they were opposite the carriage and close enough to hear Melissa talking to Jim as the two searched for the missing bracelet. That boy's a power woman, Kimasabi. Wait, listen. I'd risk coming out here to hunt for it if I didn't feel sure, you fool. Or not talk nice now. Let me hear him mention about passengers grabbing an arm. I'm sure now that woman's one of the gang. Be ready to draw. We'll go up out of this arroyo and take them by surprise. Come on. Uh. Hey, what is this? Oh, they're back on a couple of hours. They got the drop on us, too. Were you hunting for this? Where did you find that? I found it right about here. Give it to me. It's mine. And tell that Indian to holster that gun. <laughs> Miss Melissa Powell has lost the sweetness in her voice, Tonto. Now look, mister, no masked outlaw like you can laugh at me. If that Indian didn't have that drawn gun, hey, I'd... Hey, boss, it's a posse. Help! Help! Oh, this is not good, Kimosabe. Can't get to our horses now. Miss Melissa, hey, come on back. Come along, Lord. Like the two men we were hunting. Now, hold on, Sheriff. Oh, I... Sheriff, I'm so glad you came along when you did. Yeah. These bandits stopped my carriage and made me get out. They were just about to shoot James, I'm sure. Oh, now, wait a minute. Look I... there in his hand, Sheriff, my bracelet. The gold one with the sapphire setting. He can cover it, man. All right, All right, give me that bracelet. Hey, golly, I've seen this on your arm, Miss Melissa. He must have snatched it off the way it's broken. Yes. Yes, he did. The brute. I was so frightened. We ought to string him up. They wanted for murder anyway. We know the masked hombre is one of the gang. Oh, now, calm down, boys. The law will take care of him. Miss Melissa, I'm mighty sorry you were so scared and all, but in a way, you helped catch a couple of the killers who held up a stage today. Oh, oh how awful. Please, Sheriff, let James drive me home. I've seen enough of these ruffians. Sheriff, if you'll let me explain... You shut I... up. I ought to turn my back and let the men hang you both for the way you scared the daylights out of this poor lady. We not outlaws. If you listen, you'll You learn. shut up too, Injun. We'll take the guns, men, then we'll... Wait, the gang is moving in on us. I'm getting away from this awful place. Oh, you wait. You'll not leave. Let go of my arm. What's the men... Let go her engine, you uh... Hey, Sheriff, that's the voice I heard say those very words at the time of the holdup. This woman is one of the gang. Those are her men attacking. These guns, I told you that... Hey, he's shooting at the outlaw. No, I told you to let me go. No. Let me go, you fool, Redskin. That's the voice. That's it. Watch her. Don't let her get away. Excitement, the Lone Ranger and Toto, though detained by the sheriff and the men grouped near them, fought against the outlaws. Some of the posse had ridden off to get behind the gang, and soon Randy and the others were herded back to the carriage. Some of them wounded, all of them disarmed. Gosh, boss, we did the best we could trying to rescue you. It was your own fault for coming back to get that darn bracelet. Shut up, you! Sheriff, I, I don't thunder, know why... I that is the voice I heard. Yes, sir, she was with that gang. How can you say that? In fact, that masked man is the leader of these outlaws. He must have had these ruffians wait back in hiding while he and the Indian held up my carriage. They frightened me, Sheriff. I... I'll drive home now. You listen to me, Melissa Powell. You don't go free and let us hang for your murders. What? You led our gang. 
Posing like a lady during the day, but tough as any man when you led this gang at night. Your old man was just as tough when he led his gang. Everybody's heard of Arizona Pete and his gang. Arizona Pete? I remember now. His last name was Powell. That's right. So she fooled us all, eh? <laughs> Fooling you bunch of tin horns was easy, even for a lady. Lady? That's a hot one. Shut up, you! Shut up, do you hear? Well, it looks like Lady Militia has sort of gone tough all of a sudden, eh? Uh, say, mister, just how did all this come about anyway? Briefly, as the sheriff and the men listened, the Lone Ranger explained what had happened. When he had finished, the sheriff spoke again. Well, i would be doggone. She sure was a smart one trying to turn the table on you, mister. But now we got them all, and the law will see that they hang, including the... Lady, hmm? <laughs> well, we'll take him to town now. I'm glad we were able to be of help, Sheriff. I tried to explain at the time, but, well, it all turned out for the best. Let's leave now, Toto. We'll go get our horses. Adios. Adios. Say, I let them go, and I don't even know who that masked hombre is. Well, he gave me this bullet, Sheriff, and said you'd know. Darned if it don't look like silver to me. <laughs> A silver bullet? Holy cow. Hey, you would sure made a mistake if you tried to hang him. Hmm? You know, that masked man is the Lone Ranger. Oh, Lone, Lone Ranger. Ranger. I'll still, uh, oh! This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Uh -huh.